thanks for joining us for this concert and the festival. We are the Lakeside Ramblers from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And that tune was called Ed Qualls Polka. Uh, Ed Qualls uh, was the uncle of Leonard Finseth, from whom Leonard learned a lot of tunes. So those of you in Minnesota who are familiar with uh, Leonard's music, uh, you probably recognize that one. And uh, we've tried to do tried to do some tunes uh, this afternoon or tonight, uh, depending when you're watching it, uh, that you might know uh, from, from various sources as we're, we're trying to build a common repertoire uh, across the region. Uh, is called uh, No Norwegians in Dickieville. Uh, which is a, a pop tune made popular by uh, the Goose Island Ramblers uh, from Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, Bruce Ballerud uh, sang it. And the story behind it is that they played this Scandinavian waltz in a town called Dickieville in southwestern Wisconsin. And afterwards, one of the band members said to another, because uh, they had called it the Dickieville waltz in, in the concert, he, he said, there aren't any Norwegians in Dickieville. And so they, uh, they decided to write uh, lyrics to it uh, about there not being Norwegians in Dickieville. So we're going to play the original waltz with uh, the lyrics. So here is No Norwegians in Dickieville.
Microfins hogging down by the mill Cause there's no Norwegians in Dickieville There's no Norwegians in Dickieville None in the valley and none on the hill There never was and there never will Be no Norwegians in Dickieville The next tune we'll do is a tune from Mabel, Minnesota. Uh, it was uh, played by the Bruce Spallroot of the Goose Island Ramblers, who unfortunately passed away this year. And uh, he, he learned this when he was uh, playing some gigs in the Twin Cities and met a band from Mabel. And he, he learned this tune along with some others. This is called the Minnesota 6-8 Two-Step. We're going to do two more fiddle tunes for you. Uh, the first one is uh, a tune that we got from a Leonard Finseth recording that will be familiar to a lot of you out in, uh, in Minnesota, as uh, I think you've, you've played this one before. This is Randy Severson's waltz, and Randy Severson was uh, rare in that she was a, a, a female fiddler who, who really played out um, in, in what was uh, a male-dominated uh, music culture at the time. Uh, but this is, uh, this is a, a fabulous tune. It's one, one of our favorites.
one last tune, and this one comes from the lumber camps of northern Wisconsin. It's called the, uh, the Coudre Jig. And it's not a jig in the sense of a 6-8 tune like you would have in Irish or Scottish music, but like in uh, native French and Métis music, it's a, a tune for jigging. It's a reel for jigging or step dancing. Uh, and this was, uh, this was learned from a recording of a musical hero of mine, Otto Rindlisbacher, who in turn learned it from Ojibwe lumberjack fiddler um, Regis Belial. So here it is, the Couture Jig. And thank you very much. Our hoof on the roof and we're going to be playing some of the tunes that represent more of the Yorker tradition in the upper Midwest music. When the lands opened up in the mid-19th century not only did it attract European immigrants but also families from eastern United States who were also looking for a better life. These fiddlers brought their Scottish, English, and French-Canadian traditions with them. 
One of the most famous Yorker fiddlers was Charles Pa Ingalls, who was born in 1836 in uh, Cuba, New York, and died in 1902 in South Dakota. He learned to fiddle in northern Illinois and spent most of his life in Wisconsin, Minnesota, um, and uh, South Dakota. And his daughter, Laura Ingalls Wilder, featured him in her Little House on the Prairie series. So we're going to play some of the tunes that you might have heard at dances during the late 19th century in Minnesota from these Yorkers. Uh, the first we're going to do is we're going to start out with a couple of Scottish dances. One was mentioned in the Little House books called Haste to the Wedding. Another was mentioned in a book called Son of the Middle Border by Hamlin Garland. It took place more in the La Crosse area, um, at, but at about the same time as Little House. And that tune is called Honest John. <laughs> was called uh, Celebrated Opera Reel. Opera Reel was a really common um, tune of the day. It's a really fun four-part reel. Uh, there's lots and lots of versions, and the one version we're going to play was by fiddler Iva Dingwald. She was the daughter of a fiddler from the Elk River, Minnesota area, who was a contemporary, actually, of, of Pa Ingalls. And uh, this is a tune that uh, she, uh, that we learned from one of her source recordings.
described, as you probably figured out by now, is pretty eclectic. So the next set that we're going to do um, is a Polish Krakowian. This is the national folk dance of Poland. And we're going to pair it with a French-Canadian quick step. These are both tunes that Iva Dingwell played. And one of the things that she mentioned when they put together their dance sets, that they would play their tunes, their 2-4 two tunes, but the last change, as she called it, or the last tune, would switch to 6-8, but it would be in the same beat. So we're going to kind of demonstrate that by doing the, the Krakowian quick step uh, to uh, Steamboat quick step. were very uh, popular and they're mentioned a lot like in the Little House on the Prairie series and in other literature but one of the things that we learned was that there were dance versions of a lot of these popular songs um, and we have been working on these and finding how much we really enjoy them all. Um, the first one we're going to do is called Old Dan Tucker. It was Iva Dingwall's square dance version of Old Dan Tucker. a very popular uh, parlor minstrel kind of tunes. One was called Life on the Ocean Waves. 
and the other was called Captain Jinx, and Captain Jinx is actually an Irish tune called John Kelly's, um, but it was set to, to music. But uh, these are the dance versions of these two tunes. And both of them are mentioned in the Little House on the Prairie series. In fact, in Pepin, Wisconsin, not too far where, from where we are today. Minnesota, uh, Pa taught uh, Laura and her sisters how to do what they call round dances, and that's the waltzes and the polkas and the shadishes, uh, many of that you've heard from other bands uh, during this festival. Now, I'm quite convinced that Pa picked up some, you know, Scandinavian tunes and some other um, tunes during his travels, um, but he also probably had a lot of the popular tunes of the day, and one that she mentions is called Home Sweet Home, uh, that she mentions in the Little House in the Big Woods uh, that took place in Pepin. Now, when our research, we found that Home Sweet Home was not only a song, but it was turned into a waltz, and it was also turned into a quick step called Sweet Home. So we're going to play for you the Home Waltz, which is essentially just a variation of Home Sweet Home.
So the Ingalls had a lifelong relationship with the church, and in fact, Pa uh, started the Congregational Church in Walnut Grove, Minnesota. Um, but they often lived in remote areas and weren't able to get to services. And so Pa, on Sundays, would switch from doing his songs and his dances to doing his hymns and his uh, religious music. Now, in other parts of the country, kind of mixing fiddlers with religious music, this, you know, religious um, activities, you know, didn't really mix. But for some reason, this taboo just didn't seem to hold in the upper Midwest. And Pa didn't have any problem with doing a dance on Saturday night and then playing hymns um, on Sunday morning. So as kind of a thank you to the First Congregational Church of Cannon Falls, who's been one of our partners with this uh, festival, we'd like to finish up with uh, a hymn that was one of Pa's favorite, Sweet Hour Prayer. So this is the Erskine Shottish, and this comes from the Erskine Old Timers, who were a great band from the mid-1900s up in northwestern Minnesota.
right, so this is Selma Ramsey's Mazurka. Selma Ramsey also came from northwestern Minnesota, and he was a great old-timey band leader, one of Minnesota's best, most proficient old-timey band leaders back in the early 1900s. was a great old man from uh, Mondovi, Wisconsin, right outside of there in a place called Drummond Township. And uh, on tape, he, he said this one's a good old Rhinelander, and that's all he said about it. Rhinelander is just kind of a Norwegian version of a shottish, so we, we just call it a shottish and keep it simple.
Clarence Johnson was in uh, Old Man Swanson's band in the Eau Claire area. And uh, Old Man Swanson was one of the best fiddlers in the area. And his band was, dance band was considered one of the best. So this is Clarence Johnson's polka. <laughs> So this is Walter Stoltman's Waltz for those of you who are new, new watchers um, and haven't seen the Upper Midwest Folk Fiddlers. Um, we've been learning a bunch of tunes by Walter Stoltman and Hillary Stoltman of Northwestern uh, Minnesota. Hillary was kind enough to give me all of his dad's and his old tapes and we've made a tune book called the Walter Stoltman Tune Book. It, it's, I think it's called the Stoltman Family Tune Book. It's called the Stoltman Family Tune Book. And uh, you can get that online if you so desire on Bandcamp. But this is, uh, this is a great old Walter Stoltman waltz here. <laughs>
All right, so uh, this Leonard Finseth tune is a great old shot. She made this one up, at least he says so on the tape. He says, I just made this one up last night, and I guess I'm going to call it a, the Drammen Township, uh, Shottish, which is where he's from, Drammen Township. And, uh, you know, it's, it's cool because even though there's, you know, he plays mostly traditional music, and a lot of these fellers play mostly traditional music, it's great that they still make up tunes in the style that uh, they're used to. So this one is kind of in that similar style that he would play in old Norwegian, Norwegian Rhinelander. So. This one comes from northern Wisconsin, and this is Regis Bilau's two-step. Um, it was learned, Regis was a, uh, a Native American up in the middle of Wisconsin. He taught this tune to a Swiss accordion player named Otto Rindlisbacher, who taught this tune to a Norwegian fiddler named uh, Leonard Finseth. So that's, that's about the story of the upper Midwest there, going Going culture by culture and region by region, the music just kind of travels, so at least it used to.
All right, so this one goes back to Norway. This one's called The Waltz from Hard Honor. And uh, I, I haven't heard any Norwegians still playing it, but I'm sure someone in the Hard Honor region of Norway is still, still playing it. get through this, I promise. <laughs> mm, just a little bit too small for him. <laughs> it's a fashion statement. So we are uh, right next to a train track. So uh, we're gonna cut this out and cut back in in a moment. And uh, we'll be back after this interruption.